down right in the northernmost section of Gonorizo National Park. Behind me is the Rundi Savi Junction, the confluence of the two rivers leading out of the park into Mozambique. And the next few days, we're going to be exploring this section of the park. Uh, GCT, the Gonorizo Conservation Trust, has afforded us time to come down as private guides and show us the new products on offer, uh, especially the new Mahove camp, which we stayed in last night. Absolutely fantastic. Pretty similar to the CBC camp by the cliffs there. Affords us the, the same luxuries, beautiful showers, flush loos, nice tented accommodation. And we're going to spend the next few days bumbling around down here. Beautiful big Elala palm forests. As you can see all the riverine, the rivers behind us here. Try ourselves a bit of fishing, as you know I always do. And uh, we'll keep you posted. Um, like I mentioned, we're at the Savi Rundi Junction down here. And the rivers here are not very deep. But at the moment, early season, oh, there's actually a hippo behind us there. But early season, there's a lot of water flowing through here still. And we've just come to one of these little ponds and disturbed some buffalo bulls that were eating on the edge. But I want you to come and have a look at this track. And this is why we've got to be so careful crossing when we do cross back and forth on this river. Have a look at the size of this crocodile track. This is an absolute dragon. If I put my hand in it, if any of you have shook my hand or know me, I've got fairly big hands. Look at the size of this track. So if that's 9 inches, 10, 11, 12, 13 at least, up to there. So there's a 13 foot giant that's just moved into this pond. And he's obviously, he's after, he's after catfish, he's after the Zambezi softshell terrapins. Or the unsuspecting Nyala or Impala that might come down here. And, uh, and we've got to be careful as well. But this is an absolute giant of a crocodile playing around in these rivers here. Right, let's carry on. So, after leaving the, the Rundi Savi Junction, we've come up to the lower Tembohata area. It is this massive floodplain riddled with albida trees, sausage trees, and these huge open marshy swamps. And we just came into the opening here, and there's about a thousand buffalo behind us eating on the green in the swamp here we've got thousand buffalo here on this side i don't know a hundred zebra a bunch of eland we've come through impala we've just seen a really fresh female leopard track this section is just an absolute plethora of game so next time you guys decide to come down to to Ghana's, to this section i would definitely suggest we come down here to the timboata because there is just masses of game Amazing photographic opportunities as well. We've got the baobabs in the background, all the albida trees, that blue light coming through. Definitely one of my new favorite places. Right, uh, guys, so we're just back from our, our two-hour walk from, from the bottom by the Savi there. And we walked through the Timbohata Plains where we bumped into that herd of like a thousand buffalo. There was, there was eland everywhere, zebra. Um, Impala, we found that fresh leopard track, warthogs, it's, it's just a plethora of game down there. We then came up onto the plateau here and there's, we've walked into this huge wild mango, this, this wild mango forest, rain trees and uh, dotted lala palms and palm forests and groves. It's absolutely stunning in here. The bird life as we were coming through here is just fantastic. And then we've come down, boom, opened up into this just green oasis. So this is the Tembohata Pan. And it is just a vast expanse of green, water everywhere, hippos, there are, there are hundreds of hippos in here, crocodiles everywhere. And all the game is coming down now as we've been sitting having our cup of coffee in the shade. We've had impalas, we've had zebra, we've had eland, we've had everything coming down to have a drink at the pan here. And all the water birds as well. Just an absolutely fantastic picnic spot down the bottom. And we're the only people in the park. We have not heard so much as a car or seen so much as another person since we've been on our walk this morning. Anyway, so we're going to leave now and we're going to start doing a loop all the way back to Mahove, back to the campsite that we're staying in. And uh, we'll keep you updated as to how the day goes. Guys, we are again inside a baobab tree. As most of my videos you've seen, I love climbing in these things. But this in particular one is a very special tree. This is what they call Shadrick's office. 
So Shadrick was a, an infamous elephant poacher back in the 70s and he used to operate down here in Gonorizo National Park and he would use these massive hollowed out baobab trees to hide from the authorities, to hide his cash, um, his, uh, his ivory stores and then he would go out and trade it uh, after he built up a big enough store of ivory. But he would, uh, he would be safe inside here, he would have his, his office where he would operate, he could sleep inside this baobab nice and dry. Um, and safe from lions and all those other sort of things. But this is the most incredible bear but It must, man, it, it must span, what's that? That must span about four meters inside here in diameter. It's got a couple of holes in it now. The elephants have really gorged, gouged their way through it. And it's also full of bats. There's a couple of, it looks like Egyptian tomb bats in here as well. But just another one of the most incredible bear And it's right by the Temple Hata here where we've just had tea. Absolutely stunning, stunning tree. Right guys, we're just back from our morning drive and I just thought I'd start showing you around the camp a little bit. This is the new Mahove camp, as I described earlier. And uh, here we go. Let me just give you a little, little tour of the dining room and the main sort of living area. So it's all Bedouin tent style. Nice open plan, looking out, we've got bean bags. How's it guys, we've got bean bags, so everyone can chill when we get back in the shade here. Uh, nice basic dining room set, or your coffee station. Your cooler boxes and we look out, check it this and we walk out and we're right on the edge of the Rundi here. You can't see in this video, but across the way there with our binos, there's an assortment of game again. There's zebras and wildebeests all out on the floodplain. There's a little fire pit for the evenings. Nestled under this huge nyala berry. So we're going to spend the morning, have a bit of brunch, and we'll go out for an afternoon drive just now. So I thought I would just also show you guys some of the accommodation at Mahove. It's, as I described before, a basic tented camp, but so comfortable. So let's have a look at what we've got. As we walk up to one of the tents, it's got shade cloth over a tent to keep it nice and cool, keep the breeze coming through. Right here's the veranda. And it's also looking out over the Rundi. We come and it's all tent and zipper there's your light system it's on a little battery pack so you do have lights in the room nice big comfortable beds you got your side table with solar lights and water little area for keeping your your clothes with hangers for your shoes you don't get scorpions in them and then we come out the back and it's got an open air vibe shower with the the bag in the background there that gets hoisted up so if you come into the shower whoops come into the shower you've also got a, a nice view there's the bag it gets filled with hot water in the evening so you can have a nice hot shower a little bit of a 360 basin mirror wash basin and then the all-important flush loo so nice and comfortable for everybody involved so yeah guys we don't need much we're going to be out most of the time on safari but when we do come back for an afternoon nap or at night time we're going to have a nice comfortable bed to come back to hot water and comfortable accommodation with a great view just stopped in now at Machiniwa Pan and it is incredible. It is not as big as the timber hut that we were at this morning but the bird life, the lily pads, it's just absolutely stunning. The water birds here are incredible and again 
Hundreds of hippos. Crocodiles everywhere. Beautiful backdrop. Definitely a top picnic site. morning guys we're just back from our our game drive this morning and we got i think it was eight or nine mammal species before we were even a kilometer from camp we went um this morning we went all the way down to the the chilo crossing down on the savi just to have a look down there so that's another option uh later on in the year you can fly into mahenya airstrip and then cross over the savi and then get here to the mahove camp which makes it a a lot quicker trip than driving all the way from Chapinda through the park. But just a final recap before we head on our way today. Mahove, let's go through it again. Tented camp. There's uh, six tents, open air dining room, so we can take take up to 12, 12 guests uh, in the camp. Fantastic area. Not many other campsites around here, so you are pretty isolated. You're going to be one of the only people... Um, bumbling and safariing around the bush here so fantastic little area this morning we woke up we had the leopard come through the back of camp and we had the lions calling down at uh, Chamulavati at the crossing so they are around we've had to work for the predators but they are around we are off now we're going to go cross over the Chitove and go on top of Chilocho Cliffs what makes this park um, one of the most iconic parks other than the elephant are these fantastic sandstone cliffs that sprout up 200 meters into the air above the Rundi River and run for about 20 kilometers through the park. So that's our that's our game plan today. Out of camp and up onto the top of the up on top of the cliffs. Come and have a look at this. This is the reason we're up here. It's taken us about two hours to get around to on top of the cliffs that we were talking about this morning. But um, on the way here we bumped into a lioness at one of the pans which is quite nice few ellies on the way we had to stop and uh, let them calm down for like an hour we sat with them to let them calm down but it's all well worth it come have a look over the edge here got to keep quite steady yeah because it's like a 200 meter drop but have a look at this absolutely incredible 5,000 square kilometers of untouched wilderness for as far as the eye can see from this point on top of the Chilocho Cliffs there's there's wilderness there is nothing and as operators we're at liberty to fly camp up here GCT have allowed us this position up here so we can come up here one of the evenings on our safari and uh, have a little fire little fly camp couple of tents and spend the evening up here just absolutely phenomenal absolutely phenomenal We've got the Rundi River winding its way down, which we've been, you know, bumbling about the last few days. Elephants coming across the river here. Later on in the year, this is just teeming with wildlife as they're all going to come down to the river for water. Guys, oh, could get stuck up here for a very long time. It is amazing. Absolutely fantastic. So we've just been sitting on the top having, having a... A nice cool drink and looking out over the cliffs and we've decided instead of driving all the way around which is about a two hour drive um, we're gonna walk down one of these big ancient elephant paths that comes down the cliffs so we're gonna take probably 25 to 30 minutes to get down whereas the car is gonna take two hours but we're gonna go the scenic route there's already a bunch of elephant at the bottom under the baobabs resting down here so once we get down we'll just get our wind right and, and sneak around skirt around them and then go through the river we're going to get picked up by the car and head into cbc camp so let's uh let's get down here nice and nice and carefully right morning guys i just want to show you now that we've actually spent the night in cbc camp uh i feel i need to just show you what it's all about pretty similar uh copy paste to the mahove camp a few slight differences in the bedrooms 
um, well in the tents and I will show you those right now. Right so again CBC which is Chilocho Bush Camps has six tents that look out onto the same Rundi River. Similar setup probably a little bit bigger greener trees around this camp in the thick of it as we were at the other camp solar panel running our little lights inside let's get in here same same setup nice comfortable bed in here it doesn't have uh, a wash basin that flows out we use these these little wash basins with our kettles with the hot water and cold water have your mirror again your outside shower with the matepi outdoor vibe the bag in this one hangs above the shower and you go straight out the back this is where the lions walked past last night and then of course your flush loo for everybody's comforts so a little walk through of the cbc camp the chilocho bush camps has our little fire pit surrounded by a boma we go up into the Bedouin tent. Similar setup to Mahove. Little charging station. Looking out over the sand into the Rundi. Dining room area. Serving area. And then there's a little, little sleeping spot with bean bags that you can relax, read your Kindle. Have a nap or look out over the river. So guys, I keep speaking of fly camping and uh, camping out. Little setup here for you just to have a look, see what I mean by a fly camp. So basically we're going to be in this little dome tent, little cushion outside to sit. We'll have a, a campfire next to us, but you're going to be in this little mosquito dome tent looking at the stars and the moon. Nice and comfortable inside there, your wash basin before you go to bed, cliffs in the background. So basically that's what entails a little fly camp. You feel a little bit more exposed, but truly immersed in the wild. You can't see right now, but in the background there, there's actually a pride of eight lion lying next to the water. We've been watching them all morning. All right, good morning everyone. We're here this morning. We've woken up extra early to get uh, below the Chilocho Cliffs as the sun's coming up and get some really nice pictures. We had a busy night last night in the camp. Lions 360 all around us calling. We had a little leopardess. She came in and she snuck in by the game drive vehicle and we managed to sneak up and, and put a torch on her and have a really good look at her. So CBC was really busy last night. And guys, I hope over the last few days, I've managed to sort of give you a little taste of what Gona Rougeau has to offer and as a private guide what we're able to offer and what the camps are like and convince you to come on safari. And if I can't convince you then just this view behind you in itself should get you down here.